Hey folks, Corey here with Fist and Stone World Gaming. Welcome to the Stone Path. In today's video, I'm going to return to the Blackstone Fortress and talk about painting spindle drones. Since this is only a small group of adversaries from the game, I recommend painting them in a batch. That's how I did it. Starting off here with a prime of Wraithbone Spray. First step, contrast paint, Black Templar with a medium shade brush. I'm going to take this and apply it all over the miniature. This is going to give it a good base to build the rest of the paint scheme off of. And also going to be used for the legs and the underside of the model. Make sure as you're applying the contrast paint, you cover up all of the white areas, front, back, underneath, and then as you begin to move around the model, make sure you don't have any huge pools of black paint. This makes sure the contrast paint works in its most effective fashion, giving you both a shadow in the recesses, a highlight in the high areas, and good color coverage on the flat areas. Once you've completed applying the black Templar, you have to give the model about a half an hour to dry. This is where working in a batch comes in handy. Now here's a look at the model after it's dried off. You can see how the contrast paint has really done its job, creating some depth in the miniature. Runefing Steel is next. I'm going to use a small base brush here. And the technique I'm going to use is called overbrushing. It's very similar to dry brushing, but you don't get the brush quite as dry. Load it up with some paint, a couple of quick wipes on a paper towel, and then begin dragging the brush across flat surfaces of the model, trying to leave the darker paint in the recesses here. You can build the color up slowly. This is kind of the effect I'm looking for here. I'm going to use this technique across the entire exterior armored component of the miniature. That'll be across the top, on the front, and the very top of the back. And then here's the model once this step's complete. Up next, I'm going to put a shade of Gucci Violet over the entire area we just painted in metal. This is to give the model a little bit of an interesting color in the depths of the Blackstone Fortress. After you've applied the shade, set the model aside for 20 to 30 minutes to dry. Once it's had a chance to dry, the next step is going to be a dry brush step using Necron Compound. Not only are we going to put this over the metallic areas, but we're going to very lightly put it across all of the model. This will make the highlights pop just a little bit more than the black Templar paint normally allows using the contrast technique. I find this is very, very effective over black to give the sense of a metallic gunmetal or black metal type of look. And with the dry brushing complete, we're going to get a little bit fancy here with a glow effect or a OSL or object source lighting type effect on the eye slash lens at the middle of the miniature. Here are the paints I'm going to use along with a small base brush. The idea is we're going to put a little bit of a glow right around the eye to make it look a little bit menacing. First up, I'm going to use a contrast paint, Blood Angels Red. I have thinned it down 50-50 with the contrast medium. It's just to build the effect up slowly and not overdo it on the first pass. You see it very quickly works its way in, and then you just want to leave it a little bit to dry to see how it's settled up. I decided I wanted the color to be a little bit stronger for this glow effect, so I decided to come in with a second pass of the thinned down Blood Angels Red. Once that layer's dry, I come in with the Wild Rider Red and just put this on the actual lens itself. I'm going to start to build up the effect of the glow by changing the color from darker to brighter. Finally, the flash gets yellow just as a little dot on the very center of the lens. You want to leave the Wild Rider Red in the back. Here's a look at the finished effect. And the last step before heading on to the basing, I'm going to use some Stormhost Silver Paint with a small layer brush to pick out a few really sharp highlights. The idea here is to pick some sharp edges just to make the model pop a little bit. I also went down the center of the top of the model, the center of the flat panels, and the very edges. Anything that you think might catch a glint off of any kind of lighting that might be out there. With painting complete, the final step is to base the models. I base all my Blackstone Fortress models the same way, and I did a stone path on those. Please check out Stone Path Episode 4. I'll put a link in the description below. Here they are, all completed. I'll let the photos and videos run.
Well, I hope there was something in that video that you found useful for your future hobby projects. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like down below. Also, please subscribe. Click the little bell icon for notifications on future videos that I post. If you're interested in checking out some more videos right now, click on one of the links that's on the screen. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on The Stone Path.